but I bet everyone in here feels like after the past few years or maybe their whole life, like, boy, life can come and kick you in the ass with no warning. And I feel like I've lost something that I can't name that I'll never get back. And uh, I need to reckon with those feelings. And so to me, whenever I choose something to do artistically, it is an opportunity for me to reckon with a feeling that I deal with in my life and hope that it'll be interesting to others. That was a pretty five-star answer. Thank you all so much for being here, and thank you for such a wonderful show. Um, you know, I I love that my therapist loves this show. And, That's pretty good. Yeah, and, and believe me, she is very critical of things that portray therapy. If you want to hear her feelings on other movies sometimes. Yes, I do. Yes, Go okay. Ahead. Let's start with... So, <laughs> um, again, it's such a wonderful show. It is funny and tragic and smart and silly, sometimes all at the same time. Um, this is an audience of your fellow actors, sag after actors. Uh, so I actually always like to start by asking, how did you get your SAG card? What was the job that, that brought that to you? And you're a foreigner, so I don't know if yeah, you... Yeah, I'm a foreigner. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bloody hell. Foreigner. He's like, get out. Oh, sorry. Uh, Oftra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sarg Oftra. Uh, I got, I think what got me was uh, Robot Chicken. No way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool, right? <laughs> that actually is very. That's cool. like the coolest. Everyone else is gonna have like commercials and stuff, and you got it with robot chicken. Robot fucking wow, chicken. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> who, who, were you playing yourself or? I was. Pl- I played uh, six characters, all who who sort of swore and screamed a lot. <laughs> it was very in my wheelhouse. I was a bit of Iron Man. I can't remember. There was lots of screaming Man? and fuck, lots of that. You voiced Iron Man in Robot Chicken. I did, chicken? yeah. Are you allowed to do that? Because you're also Hercules. I think it was pre... Don't tell now. Yeah. I mean, I really... It's not... You know, it's just my voice and maybe I disguised it. (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. I've gotten you in trouble. Um, Jason, for you? Uh, I got mine for a movie called Dead Man on Campus. I was 16 years old. Yep. Uh, uh, Mark Paul Gosselaar, Tom Everett Scott. Zach. Yeah. And my... Girlfriend in the movie was Linda Cardellini, who I then yeah. did Freaks and Geeks with. Yeah, I was, I was still in high school. That's amazing. Yeah. Jessica, for you, um, I think mine was a regional McDonald's scratch biscuits commercial. There we go. Where I think my dad came to the McDonald's and uh, he saw his daughter making biscuits from scratch. I think they were trying to compete with Popeyes. So <laughs> obviously, I took my black ass over there and. Booked that gig, and we had a, be- a very regional black biscuit commercial. <laughs> and I think that's how I got it. Thank you guys so much. Get the bag, get the card, get the card. By any means necessary. Luke, for you? For me, it was a gig called Deadly Clash. <gasps> oh, yeah! Oh, you Sorry. know about Deadly Clash? My, a good friend of mine was on it. Oh, word! Yeah. That I therapist loves love that it. Show. <laughs> <laughs> that one is dark. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a comic book that got adapted to a TV show. Yes, yeah. one of the faithful. Oh, no. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, I met one of my closest friends on that. Ben and I, yeah. like William Marcus. That's my guy. Like I saw him on Thursday. Like so, I met one of my my closest friends on that gig, and um, it helped me be a little less broke. So thank you, <laughs> <laughs> Lukita. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got mine doing uh, a little recurring spot on this H or hello this ABC show called Speechless oh it was Speechless really? yeah it was Speechless yeah wow. I just was like one of the the characters cute little girlfriend and I wore a cute little blazer so Aww. yeah Aww. <laughs> had a little carnival case speaking of I hope everyone in the back can see her shoes because these things are dangerous oh yeah they're bomb <laughs> <laughs> they're bombs well, again, congratulations on, on such a wonderful show. Um, I would love to go back and ask Brett and Jason sort of about the genesis of this, because I know it comes to us also with your co-creator, Bill Lawrence. Um, but what was sort of the initial spark or idea for the series? And Jason, did you always know you were going to act in it as well? Uh, well, I'm going to turn it over to Brett. I got to be a, a, a passenger on the creator train, which is uh, sometimes I do stuff from scratch and it's so hard. I got really lucky. Bill and Brett pitched me this idea on a Zoom, um, and I think I'll let you take it from there, but they had both thought of kind of separate ideas that came together as one, and I got to jump on board, but they should take full credit for that. 
Well, come on. We, uh, me, me and Bill had separate ideas that were similar. Mine was darker, his was lighter. <laughs> uh, which I think is our dynamic. And, uh, and we realised if we put them together, it would make this. And this seemed tonally the right show. And then we... Uh, this is no... Oh, every part of this show is like a dream in that you sort of... I think people... It's very difficult to say this because I think people say this when it isn't true. But like, we got all our first choices. Do you know what I mean? And and there, I don't think the show would work without Jason. And we, when we discussed it, it was like, what can we get Jason Siegel? Because a, I love the Muppets. <laughs> and, uh, you do. I do. And I have the poster of his film on my wall. Like I think his, and I've his. Yeah, he made the the second best Muppet film. And uh, wait a minute. Well, only only because Christmas Carol. Christmas Are you putting Carol? Christmas Carol above my no. head? But the only, no. I thought you accept that because no one can beat the story of a Christmas. I don't Carol. accept it, but it's fair. <laughs> uh, but I will say that he had that poster on the wall during the Zoom. And, no. and yeah, he did. And in all seriousness, it is one of the things that made me feel safe to do this show with them because I think that if you love the Muppets. You are not afraid of earnestness. Mm -hmm. And there is something about comedy that can get mean-spirited sometimes, and you can take a, kind of this low-hanging fruit of comedy that makes fun of things. Mm -hmm. And it's I've tried really hard to resist that my whole career. And so when I saw that Muppets poster up there, I was like, oh, he's he's not afraid of the parts that are like, like beauty is embarrassing kind of feelings. And I knew the show would be great. You really do love them up because you're a huge Oscar really Grouch fan. Yeah. And He's I, like your favorite co-star. Uh, yeah, Oscar yeah. Grouch. Yeah. 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 I've never felt. I've never felt so seen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we we the reason to have the reason we wanted Jason is I love the Muppets and I think Jason's amazing and I've always loved. I, I think forgetting Sarah Marshall is also probably top twenty of all time. Like that is a perfect film. It's perfect. He's a brilliant writer creator. And also an incredible actor. And what this part needs, what I find fascinating about Shrinking and what we managed to do because of Jason is that Jimmy does he's, lots of bad things yeah. in this. He makes terrible choices. He does very, he's very selfish. He's very, he, he has quite a long journey to go on to becoming a better person. And if you don't have someone, I can't think of any other actor who will, you will love no matter what they mm. do. Jason has like inherent sort of vulnerability and sensitivity and he's wonderful and he's funny, but you can make him a prick and no one will ever think he's a prick. Uh. <laughs> like it's amazing. It's a gift. That's it's so there's a movie that proves that perfectly. I love you, man. Yeah. I hate people who don't pick up after their dogs. You refuse to pick up after your dog in that movie. I should hate you. You're yeah. the one person who can get away with that. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> one person. Well, I said to them at the beginning, like, I seem to have curried some goodwill. <laughs> and we should spend it and use it for evil as much as we can in this process because um, it'll make the show more interesting. So, I mean, I, having seen the show, it's pretty obvious what attracted you to it. But did you know right away, was it on the page or just even when you talked to them? Or just the Muppets poster. Just yeah. the Muppets. Well, there was no page when they pitched it to me. There was just an idea and there was a um, sense of where it was going to go and what we wanted it to be like. And there was mostly this arc with Lukita, with my daughter, um, and I kind of knew what would happen with patients. I think we had hit on the Sean story a little bit. Mm -hmm. But besides that, it was pretty wide open. Uh, but I knew that I loved Bill's tone. I knew that I loved Brett. I just knew, like, uh, in the Venn di diagram of our tastes, we were probably going to hit something special if we all kind of, like, um, compromised and, and found, like, the middle ground where we all align. Mm. And something I've noticed about both of you two, but also Bill Lawrence is... Handsome. <laughs> oh, you didn't have to say that. Yeah, yeah, thank you so didn't. much. That's really kind of you. Thank you. I, there's nothing I can say that won't make me look weird at this point. Um, but you all... You just need to confirm. That's all you need to do. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, uh... Ugh, see now I'm thrown <laughs> so, because I came thinking of you and Harley Quinn with your shirt off and like how ridiculous that was like you brought this upon yourself that was ridiculous yeah if you haven't seen um, the latest episode of Harley Quinn Brett plays himself reading shirtless poetry while polishing his Emmy yeah, I love it yeah come on <laughs> 
<laughs> More of that spin-off. Uh, back to back to shrinking while yeah, sure, we're here. Okay. <laughs> No, you all come from these great ensembles. Like I associate you with great ensemble work along with all of Bill's shows. Um, and, you know, obviously this cast has such amazing chemistry. I'd love to talk about sort of bringing this cast together and starting with Jessica. What interested you in the role of Gabby? Um, oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> allies. Um, I was really interested in playing Gabby. They didn't really have anything for her, just kind of a couple of beats. And uh, they only had a couple of scripts written and she hasn't really played that big of a part in the first couple of episodes. But what they told me was that they really wanted someone at the office who really balanced all, out Paul, played by Harrison, and Jimmy, played by Jason. And Jimmy's going through this traumatic thing, so he's grieving very actively. And Paul is also grieving you know, his body and his future and his Parkinson's. And so they really wanted this like bright, sort of millennial, and mostly I just, uh, the other thing is I'm, I was a big fan of Scrubs and, and so I, I was really excited about that. I was a huge fan of Jason's and I just really trusted Jason. And I was like, oh, anything he does, I wanna do that. So it was just kind of a no brainer and, and we, figured out, we figured out Gabby as we went. So a lot of it was like, oh, they wanted to tailor it to the actress that played her and I think they met with people and then they, I got the job and, so a lot of times I would improvise on set and the writers would watch it and then they'd write something in response to that and then I would look at what they had written next and then it just became this thing where towards the end it was just, they were just kind of like, all right, you just go, go, do like whatever, say whatever. Um, and so it was a really rewarding experience, but I got, I got really lucky. I, I got on a set, you know, with like majority of white people and I was allowed to, no really, I mean, I was allowed to thrive and I was allowed to go and fly. So that was awesome. One of our mandates was anyone who, this is true, I'm not making a joke, but whoever is gonna play Gabby, we were gonna have to do a chemistry read because yes. you just never know. Oh. Yeah, you just never know how it's gonna be. Someone can be fantastic, but it's just not, the vibe wasn't there. And when Jessica said she was interested, we were like, make her, make the offer, go. There was no chemistry read or anything. We felt like we would hit the gold mine if we got Jessica, and and we did. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, that was actually my next question, because chemistry is so hard to define, and everyone in this cast has it with each other, but there there wasn't a chemistry read? Did you know each other at all? I like, am pretty adamant about chemistry reading with everybody, because I feel as though you could have the greatest actors together, but if, if it's not, if the thing's not, you're trying to like catch something. Yeah. I, like That's how I feel about acting. Like there's, there's just something you're trying to catch. I appreciate like the repeatable aspect of acting and the craft, but uh, to catch this like weird magic that is happening is kind of what film acting is so why it's magic to me uh and the idea of just watching some of jessica's work instantly we were like get her just yeah. just get her and luke for you did you have any idea going in you know what sean's arc would be because just in the first episode he goes through so much and then we continue to follow him on this journey it's it's such an amazing story i just got the pilot I was like, this thing is bomb. <laughs> it was, uh, we were talking earlier today, I felt like it was ha-ha funny, instead of mm -hmm. just, you know, laughing quietly and exhaling through my nose funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it was actual, I'd be like high-ing all over the script. And it was just a, a fun read, but I really enjoyed this sort of like, almost like in the, in the first, in the first two episodes, it was kind of like this buddy thing mm -hmm. going on between Sean and Jimmy and man I remember preparing so much for the chemistry reads and the and the auditions but when I got there it was just Jason being just a good dude like that makes all the difference because yeah obviously he's brilliant prolific and does all this great comedy work but on top of that when you feel a warmth and a sort of welcoming energy it opens something in in for me, the younger performer, to not feel so challenged to rise to this occasion, but you're being elevated as opposed to feeling like you got to do all this climbing. Like you got somebody who's really lifting you up in the performance. And so all, all my initial stuff was with Jason and that set the tone for every other scene that I got to do. And as I learned about Sean's arc, it was like, 
such a a wonderful opportunity for me to experience all of this excellence and at the same time tell a compelling story. So yeah, every box for me was checked, you know, 11 out of 10 experience. Can't wait to do season two. I'm just happy I got hired. Luke, Luke, as well as the rest of the cast, is a fucking star. And when we had the first Zoom with him, it's interesting because the part of Sean and particularly how it is in the pilot, you know, he's like tough, he's tough, angry, dark. And we had so many people who sort of read for it just like that, just that sort of one note yeah. and there was nothing else going on. And there's always this thing that's like magic. And when Luke appeared before he did the acting, when he was just saying hello and stuff, you were like, oh, this guy's special. And he was incredibly charming and lovely and funny. And we already knew, oh, he's funny. You could tell within 30 seconds, this guy's funny. And then he just brought, he had all the toughness, but there was warmth behind it. And there was like history behind it. And it just suddenly was so much more three-dimensional. And it was like, yeah, he's a fucking, he's a movie star. Let's get him. Yeah. His audition as well in that, in that uh, session, there were so many improvs he did in our opening scene that we ended up putting in, in the script when we shot it. Like, I don't know if you noticed that, but stuff from your audition made it into the show. It, it was special. You noticed. I'm just glad. You <laughs> well, like, he's like, yeah, I want writing cred. I, mean, I, I know what you're doing, like, but you made those, dog. Like, you you were the one who was doing the improv, improv in it. He tried but to you it. said yes, and that's like the golden rule. Don't do that. Like, did it. Take he your did flowers. It. Take you your go. flowers. That's it. Cause you be throwing stuff. I was stuff. there when you was being no. covered, dog. No, <laughs> you said yes, and you're so good. Eat it. I like it here. I like it here. <laughs> <laughs> and Lakita, for you, I would love to hear about your casting process because I, I always think it's so strange when you put two actors together and say, pretend like you've known each other your whole life. And in so many ways, you really do feel like father and daughter for all the good and bad that entails. I mean, when I first got the audition. I, in my inbox, they, uh, there was no way I was going to have a shot at being in the room with these guys. But uh, when I hopped on a call with Jason, when that call came that I was going to get on a call with him, I was freaking out until I popped into the room and he just said like, hey, I'm so excited for this. We jumped straight in and it was just so tangibly there, that thing that we're catching. It was very much there. And then we read too. That was, uh, really? yeah, so you, we were. <laughs> she was so good. <laughs> I did I did a couple scenes. I did my first with um, Jason and then I did one with you. And that was like, we popped off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I kinda, you could kind of feel it when you, yeah. I was like, oh shoot. Like there was a lot of, you seemed patient. You seemed mm. like you weren't in a rush. Mm. And, and you also seemed like you really ain't had nothing to prove. Mm. It was wild. I learned a lot because... I, I'm a big fan of like getting auditions down. I think there's a lot of really good actors out there who don't know how to audition. And watching you work, I was like, shoot, man. <laughs> <laughs> Taking notes. So Everything you're saying is giving me hope for season two because I love this pairing. Yeah. So. <laughs> We're good buds. Come on, there you go. Um, I do want to know, since uh, you've been on the other side of, of casting, you know, since you've been actors yeah. for so long, you must know pretty quickly what you want or what you're looking for, or if someone is right or wrong for something, or maybe it's still a mystery. Uh, it's interesting, because I haven't been on both sides of it, and I, you know that thing, I'm sure you've all seen the clip that Brian, Brian Cranston says, and if you've all seen it, I won't say it, but if you haven't, so, ten of you won't have seen it. He says, and he's absolutely right. He says, "It's not your job to get the job. That isn't get that out of your head. Your job is present your version of this character. That's your job. You go in, you show. This is what I would do with it. It might not be right for them, and that's fine. Then you walk away and you forget about it, and you might get it. That's completely right. If you go in with the attitude of I fucking need this, <laughs> then <laughs> you can feel that, and it doesn't feel right. I'd say there are like." A, sometimes, often often it's sort of annoyingly magic, like like you just know. Like with this guy, like I don't think there was any, it wasn't like, mm, with any of this lot. It was like, yeah, them. And, and so that's hard for the other people. There were other people who read and they did good versions, but they weren't the right versions. It didn't feel quite right. And they did nothing wrong. There's no crime in it. And, uh, 
And but also I would say if I had any advice for actors, because it is surprising how often this doesn't happen, is at minimum do your fucking homework. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like if you ever show up and be like, sorry, I haven't had time to read the thing, it's like, well, you're not gonna be in this show. Because yeah. you've shown subconsciously you've shown I don't really work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, it's basic stuff like do your homework, have read the script, know who you're meeting with, know what you're doing, go in prepared. But beyond that, it's sort of just a lottery and it's magic. Yeah. Did, Is that right? Does anyone else want yeah, to add so, to that? Yeah. No, I was going to say I have, I couldn't agree more. Like the, the freedom and agility that preparation uh, allows you in auditioning is, is everything. Like it, it's what allows you to be present, whether you're auditioning or on film or whatever. To me, it's like uh, total preparation is what allows you to release it. I've had one example of that not being true, which is the audition for Forgetting Sarah Marshall when Russell Brand walked in. And he came in, and he swaggered in, all like russell -y. And he said, he said, you'll have to excuse me, mate. I've only had a chance to take a cursory glance of your little script. Perhaps you should tell me what it is you require. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I'm curious, do you think he was being serious or was this a brilliant I think he was Jedi? being dead serious. Dead serious, okay. <laughs> um, well, actually, I, I want to talk about a couple of the cast members who aren't here, like the great Krista Miller, who I yeah. Yeah. always love to see. And so if, I, if I may. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you sorry, for reminding Krista, me. Krista Miller is so sad that she can't be here. She's so she's genuinely heartbroken. She has COVID. And she sent me a text and she asked me if I would read this out. And I promised that this is her. I, I haven't read this one. It says, hey, everyone, it's me, Krista. I am home with COVID for the very first time, which sucks because I don't get to be there with this cast that I love so much. It's also bad because I've spent the last three years telling everyone I was genetically superior. <laughs> and immune. So sad for me. I just want to say out loud on record that this is the most talented group of people I've ever worked with. And I feel they are so good that it forces me to try and raise my own game. I sometimes find myself watching what they do and being so inspired by it, by the scenes I get to do with Jason or Harrison or Lukita or Harrison. Or she said Harrison twice. She's obsessed. Yes. <laughs> uh, she said me at all? Or did she say Harrison twice? Or Michael. And Jessica. Or Michael and Jessica. or Jessica. Oh, yeah. She said Jessica. Punch it's there. an honor. I, she says, I didn't mention Ted because sometimes I feel like he's saying things to me that Bill wishes he could actually have the courage to say <laughs> in real life. That's it. Miss you guys. It's truly an honor to work with you. Good night. <laughs> does, does anyone ha uh, want to text Harrison Ford and see if he has anything to say? No. <laughs> I ain't got that man. Harrison's what? text. <laughs> Just, yeah. just silence. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's amazing in this and obviously he's a so good in it. living legend. Um, and I heard that you kind of initially went to him with this role as a joke. Well, like you didn't think he'd say yes? I don't think it's a joke. Like, let's <laughs> prank Harrison Ford. <laughs> it wasn't like, let's get him to say yes and then say, gotcha. <laughs> Psych. Psych. <laughs> No, <laughs> but we, <laughs> we didn't think that he would ever take it. I think oh, you have. It was the, a joke for us. It, like, yes, of I course the, he won't say yes. <laughs> <laughs> the experience of of having uh, of of that is like you have a part that's perfect for Harrison Ford. So you say, you know who we should offer it to is Harrison Ford, and then for a week you get to have the enjoyment of having it offered it to Harrison Ford. Yeah. Never, I don't think we really expected he would say yes. Um, but then Ooh. Brett wooed him. I didn't expect him to read it. Yeah. I but didn't know he could. He went this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thought he doesn't, he, surely he's beyond reading. Explain you know I mean? this. Like he's like, like explain the plot to me. That things get beamed into. I don't know. I, I, I assume that. <laughs> but didn't he, he loved the script, didn't he? He told he you. Did. One of the best things he's ever read. I actually think if he had said the best. He said it was, I went to his house. I thought it was going to be scary. Uh, he answered the door. He said, best script I've ever read. And I said, shrink it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, He's, he, he must have someone else. And he, he said, best dialogue I've ever read. And I genuinely walked into his apartment and he had loads of scripts on the table. And I was like, from different projects. And I was like, he thinks I'm someone else. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> and I like fished through the scripts and I found the shrink. And I went, and I went shrink it. <laughs> and he went, yeah. And I went, uh, okay. 
do you want to do it then? And he went, yeah. And I went, oh, all right then. And then he went, is that business done? I said, looks like it. He said, let's eat. And then we ate. And I was like, I thought this is how Hollywood works. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Did you compare notes on playing grumpy characters but being really nice people in real life? He don't need the help. <laughs> And I love, I actually, I love all his interactions with, with the rest of you, and, and especially Jessica, your scenes together with him are so wonderful. But, and, and even Jason, I should ask this, you know, do you ever have those moments where like, he's so good and he's so in the moment, but you are sharing a scene with Han Solo or insert whatever iconic role you want here? Um, I think in the beginning, it took me like a day to get used to him. And then like just him being around and like anybody over... 75 too, I just need to get used to their vibe. <laughs> because they've been this way for a long time. You know, and I just, I just, they all intimidate me and I just want to orbit around them and just not make their day worse in any way. They have old bones. They've seen a lot of shit. And anyway, so that, that was a lot. Luckily, the first scene I had with him, I was with Jason and it was one of those kitchen scenes. And those were really helpful because in, in the beginning, our dynamic was sort of like two kids trying to impress someone. And it was nice to be able to take a little bit of that sort of thing in the back, back, back of my mind about who Harrison Ford is in this business and apply that to this idea of Paul, who is, you know, this, this big looming figure in therapy in the show. And so that made it a lot easier. And also, I think generating chemistry is about finding what is funny about that relationship. And there is nothing funnier to me than in a young-ish black woman annoying an older white man. <laughs> and so every day, and especially more as the season goes on, I'm like, oh, how can I annoy a grump like even more and just be so annoying? <laughs> and so that that's... That's how that kind of came to be. But he's very professional, very funny, you know, prepared and just, he would do these takes and then I'll stop, but he would do these takes where, cause he has a certain rhythm where he would be doing the dialogue. And I like to, I try and say pretty present, but I would be like, holy shit, that's a movie star. Like he would be at once beautiful, funny, young, cocky, arrogant, tender and it's like it was all of his characters rolled into one person mm -hmm. and so it was really fucking amazing to see that close up it was like watching a sunrise and it would happen maybe once every scene or twice every scene he would have takes like that and it was I feel very blessed that I got to see him do that thank you thank you <laughs> thank you thank you you talk nerds nice. thank you uh, Luke and Lukita, you're, you're both pretty young, so I don't even know if you knew who Harrison Ford was. I'm assuming. <laughs> nah, I mean, I, I, knew, I knew a little bit. Actually, my wife grew up in Mexico, so there's a lot of like American movies she wasn't familiar with. And I was like, yo, um, we got Harrison Ford on our show. She's like, oh, that's awesome. And she only knew him from Star Wars. And I was like we need to watch all the Indiana Jones movies. And that was a mistake because I put on Temple of Doom and then dude was walking around shirtless the whole time, okay? <laughs> the whole time, built like a carpenter, okay? You know what I'm saying? Built like a leading man. And then she was like, how old was he when he shot this? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking it up, 40. She's like, uh-huh. <laughs> Where is he from? And I was like, hey, 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 hey. But then I get I get the opportunity to meet with the guy and it was he's such a nice dude and there's something about him like I think he knows it and I think he's having fun with it like at this point in his life I think he's enjoying that we're enjoying him. Mm -hmm. Um quick anecdote first time I met him I'm sitting there with Jason I'm sitting there with Harrison I don't have a scene with Harrison I just did a short one with Jason and Jason and Harrison have a scene coming up and I'm watching Jason talk with Harrison and he's like yo flying a plane's got to be like it's got to be pretty cool, right? And Harrison, just cool as can be, he's like, yeah, kind of like, it's all right, you know, nothing too special. And I kind of poke my head out. I'm like, are you kidding me, man? Like, yo, you are a G for that. You just like get on your plane and fly wherever you want. And he says, G, huh? And I was like, I kid you not. I kid you not. He goes, oh, G. 
no way. <laughs> that's. I'm a fan. That's amazing. And, and yet Paul doesn't know what raw dog means. <laughs> no, but He'll Harrison does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me he tell you that. You too. Now you know we all do. Harrison, Harrison knows. <laughs> <laughs> and Lukita, I actually love your scenes together, and you got to yeah. introduce him to Fun Dip. I mean, I got to wear the hat last episode, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, he's just the the gift of having a present scene partner, especially when they're an icon and they're a legend, and you know they've put in, I mean, thousands of hours into crafting their craft, and having his generosity shooting with him every day um and witnessing that like all of y'all are saying was i mean we were all taking notes yeah she was so good she was so good in them scenes bro yep. every time like we sat on the bench it was just like it was just i just loved watching that whole dynamic i am a fan of the show to yep. be honest <laughs> <laughs> like in those scenes are some of my favorite because of how you two communicate and it's just beautiful we had a lot of like non-verbal communication he just yes. like reads through you mm. like he just gets you and when 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 action is called you can just feel him like sink into it and then he's so there with you and it's just you and this dude mm. on a park bench mm. and he's wearing a fedora <laughs> <laughs> You know, actually, what I wanted to ask, uh, uh, to backtrack a little bit, was was uh, Alice cast before Tia? Or, okay, so you had to cast the mother based off of... Yes, isn't Alice? it crazy? She looks like an exact look exactly mix alike. of the two and, of us, yeah. Right, and as, as a half Asian, I was like, I always love when I see that combination and, and it's addressed, and I didn't know if that was something that, you know, was written in the script. No, we found Lukita. Yeah. It was as simple as that. Like, we had people audition and... Uh, Fred will tell you this. The second I finished the audition with Lukita, I sent an email saying that this is this is her. He said that he said that's my daughter. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I was there for the audition. It was good. It was so good. I get it. <laughs> but then you also get like unexpected character development because now your wife is Asian and she has the joke about the shirt that she wore. You know, and and all sorts of like things inform the character. It's so interesting. I, I imagine these people lend themselves a lot to the characters. It's important. Totally, yeah. All of that stuff's important, and it's uh, the, you know, Bill. Bill taught me that early, early on of the thing of the the actor. A big rule: no dickheads anywhere. That's the main rule, and then B is let the act the actors become owner get ownership of the character about halfway through the season usually and once they are fully the character like it's kind of 50 50 at that point between the writer and the actor because you start writing to them you know once you know their voice and their vibes and what they're good at and what you're excited to see them do it suddenly becomes completely different than what it started as can i say something about that race wise yeah, um i find that a lot of times I'll slip in and out of African-American English vernacular. You know, were you gonna say something about that? My brother texted me mm. about that specific thing that what? you are about to discuss. Really, what did like, he say? I, he was like, I love the fact that there's an altern like alternation between the code switching mm -hmm. and like the authenticity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is apparent. Mm. And he, he is so excited to see more of what your character does. Oh, that's all I said, thank you. I will, he will be ecstatic. That's very nice. <laughs> um, and a lot of times it's like, uh, I for me I grew up uh, very weird, um, grew up going to a lot of like punk shows and stuff like that, but then also my, my parents are ministers, grew up going to the church, so there's something very, very black about that. But then there's also something that grew up going to like a predominantly white, performing arts school and uh, you know stuff like that and so I straddle a really weird line where I'm not quite you know the black enough or not quite you know what like whatever that is and on this show uh, um, I felt like I, re I had a really great opportunity to slip in and out of she's really black today oh she's speaking she's work she's at work oh she's doing this black joke oh she's doing this you know it, it, I don't know how to describe it, but a lot of times as a black actor, you find you need to code switch for one part and stay in that. 
And in this job, I felt like the way that we like sidestep tropes about this black female therapist was allowing her to just kind of go and sound black sometimes and be like, don't play with me or just, you know, sing absolutely by nine days in the car or Sugar Ray, um, <laughs> which is great. But I think that speaks to like creating the show and, yeah. and allowing room for people of color to to breathe. So thanks. Thank you. And I, I know this show. This show is very funny, and it is entertainment first, but um, first and foremost. But um, I find it to be incredibly accurate at depicting the world of therapy and mental health. Um, even though Jimmy's kind of a terrible therapist and that <laughs> things he shouldn't be doing, but you acknowledge that, and there's consequences. Um, what are some of the discussions you have amongst the writers, or even the cast? And I believe you work with real therapists and consultants. You, you must because yeah. it just gets yeah, too much right. We we had we had a series of consultants and we still do, uh, uh, in sort of different fields because we like to get a kind of what's the word general because so they disagree on stuff the yeah. the you know the therapists we speak to uh, I think we we always wanted to like play with it but we never wanted to disrespect mm -hmm. therapy because we're all big fans yeah I I think we also tried to uh, keep in piles, mental piles, what is immoral, what is illegal, what is uh, a bad idea, you know what I mean? Like, and and how bad is each of these things, or or what is innovative, you know? And and we try to just keep track of what was what uh, in Jimmy's behavior, so that we we were just always conscious of uh, making sure the consequences lined up with the actions. You know, and that's a, it's walks such a fine line. And that's why I, I think it's funny that my therapist loves it because she always prefaces by saying um, he should have his license taken away. But <laughs> well, there's an I think there's an element for therapists because I've had this from other therapists that for Jimmy's part, it's almost like a wish fulfillment. For therapists, like, oh, I'd yeah. fucking love to shake my patients and tell them, <laughs> you know, but I hope we balance it up with Gabby and Paul, who are very yes. good, <laughs> very good. therapists. I mean, the show is also uh, such an accurate uh, and, 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 you know, really gripping portrayal of grief. And um, I'm just curious, even though it's very funny, and I think to play Jimmy would be funny, is it ever challenging to put yourself in those situations? I don't know. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, challenge, challenging how? Like, uh, I would not want to be in that mindset, personally. I, especially during the pandemic, I could only watch happy stuff. So uh, this is one of the reasons I'm in awe of actors because I couldn't do it to myself. My uh, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. My <laughs> general mindset is that I have to work very hard to be happy, and so I think that by the time I have done all the f uh, stuff that I have to do in the morning to get to zero, to get to what I feel like is zero for most people, I feel exhausted and I feel resentful that I have to work so hard to get to zero. <laughs> And then I kind of have to start over again. But I walk out the door pretty happy and feeling really grateful for my life and all that. Uh, and so I do. I'm a pretty happy-go-lucky guy, despite the fact that there's a lot of my private time is spent getting there. And I think that the, <laughs> and I think that the show is a reflection of that. I think a lot of us, probably when I said that out loud, are like, yeah, me too. I know what you mean. I think that the show is kind of exploring that idea using a, a loss as a metaphor, right? A literal loss. But I bet everyone in here feels like uh, after the past few years or maybe their whole life, like, boy, life can come and kick you in the ass with no warning. And I feel like I've lost something that I can't name that I'll never get back. And uh, I need to reckon with those feelings. And so to me, Whenever I choose something to do artistically, it is an opportunity for me to reckon with a feeling that I deal with in my life and hope that it'll be interesting to others. That was a pretty five-star yes. answer. So, yes. Yeah, I, like, I, I viewed it as a great opportunity for me. That's why I wanted to do the show. I did a sitcom for 10 years, and I, I, I loved being on it, and I, it meant a lot to me to be a part of it. But I would say that I, it felt uh, like a long time <laughs> to be like, you know, like, where did I put my tuna sandwich? <laughs> and so... 
<laughs> and so to be exploring, to be doing comedy about themes that I relate, because I know where my tuna sandwich is in life. Like it's on the <laughs> fucking plate. Oh, it's a metaphor. <laughs> but, uh, but to be exploring, to be exploring real issues. <laughs> I want us through to comedy, do this. <laughs> what I find very refreshing and a good use of my time. I want to do this panel <laughs> when we do season 10 of Shrinking and yes. check in with Jason. <laughs> Please. My wife's still dead. She's still dead, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please write in some sort of tuna sandwich metaphor for all of us in season two. We'll Jason be loves tin fish. We, we always yeah. bonded over tin fish. We on did. Time. We so bonded have... quite a bit. We had tin fish in our trailers. It was really sweet. We did little charcuterie days. Yeah. Ooh. The hardest part of the dynamic for playing my daughter is that in my mind, we are the same age. <laughs> I swear to God. It's like Thank crazy you. to me that I have a 17-year-old daughter in this show. I think I have time for a couple audience questions. Um, I apologize in advance if I mispronounce anyone's name, um, but I believe it's Hetty. Um, wants to ask the cast, oh, and you're all uh, awesome AF BTW. Um, is there something like your wardrobe or a song or a mantra or some such that helps you get into your character? I, you go, you go, you go. It just, it's just working out. Like, Sean, he's, he needs, in my opinion, needs to appear relaxed so that the look of he can snap at any moment, um, it, it kind of comes through. And for me, it's like, if I don't do something that hurts in the morning, I'm not feeling quite mm. like Sean. So I got to do something that hurts because if you portraying anybody who served in the armed forces. It's like, I'm just trying to make sure I get that right. Those people did a lot of stuff that caused physical pain. I can hit the gym mm. for a half hour, an hour before I come to set mm. to help me settle in there. That's mine. Allison Fanger, our costume designer, our brilliant costume designer, um, was super collaborative with all of us, with all of our costumes. And one of the pieces that we discussed is a, there's a necklace that Alice wears throughout the entire show and we set at the very, very beginning when we were shooting the pilot that this was Tia's necklace that I carry it around and wear it every day. And every single day I went on to set, that was like, okay, feel, I felt that veil of grief kind of like settle in and got, it got me in character. It was just that one little thing, yeah. Um, I think I... Try. I don't want my the first time I use my voice to be on set. So on the way to work, I sing really loudly. I sing weird stuff. I sing Disney songs a lot to <laughs> get back to being a child, um, which is required for Gabby as like a childlike almost enthusiasm. She's very what you see is what you get for that day. And so for her, it's important for me to stay grounded, but also just be as weird and strange as possible and dance. I dance a lot. I dance in the morning. I dance before bed, um, but I just let it be loose and free. And um, I think also texting with my friends and doing inside jokes with my friends. But she's like a she's almost like a kid. And so I try and sing a lot of Disney on the way to work. <laughs> and she has a great wardrobe, too. I would steal so much of that wardrobe. Yeah, a lot of it's uh, just Big Bud Press, um, who's here. They have a couple no of places, yeah, and they make really great sizes. And I know I knew the girl who started it from way back in New York, and it was really cool to see that she started this company where it's super inclusive, everything's unisex, and Gabby wears a lot of that, and that's that's how we got her. So, Jason, for you. Uh, every time before I act for the past few years, I listen to a song called Song for Zula by Phosphorescent. No way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I found it when I was making a, a show called Dispatches from Elsewhere. It was like the love theme between me and my uh, love interest, and I, I just love it. It makes me feel magical melancholy. And it works for any scene, like sad, yeah. happy. Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, uh, you're an actor, so let's ask you, is there something that helps you get into character? <laughs> Find that anger. Uh, to do Roy. Sure, or any role. Uh, uh, depress for, for, for good or bad, Roy is so close to the surface. It, it's very easy for me to live in, and it's just shoulders, voice, and then I'm ready. <laughs> and that's it. Do you, ever, do you, have, you have trainings, but do you ever hurt your voice yelling so much? Uh, 
it's a, a pathetic it's a pathetic thing to complain about <laughs> i mean so yes. i have no training so yes <laughs> <laughs> Um, Lisa G has several very good questions, but I, I really want to ask this one. How many takes did Harrison Ford take to scare the peacock? Uh, well, who's Lisa G? Lisa G. Hey, Lisa okay. G. Uh, yeah, I'm not supposed to spoil this, but it's uh, it was a it was a toy peacock. <gasps> I never. Wow, guys! Known. I mean, it, it's like the pe- a, a, a peacock wouldn't know it's acting. <laughs> It doesn't understand. It's a toy? Like it wouldn't stay still or anything, so they have to do a toy peacock. Because a real peacock doesn't even know about TV or anything. (laughs) Ironic. (laughs) Can't count. You say take two, still don't get it. Yeah, no matter how many takes you do, it's not going to understand. First you have to explain numbers, cameras. Right. Don't go to action. It doesn't understand the word action. It doesn't want... We tried. And just to bring it full circle, she she also it's a long day. <laughs> she also wants to know if you'll be making another Muppet movie. Um, Great question. <laughs> uh, my feeling, uh, I loved doing the Muppet movie. I, I said everything I had to say, and I feel as though, for example, someone like Brett would be an amazing custodian of the Muppets. Like uh, I would, I would be very thrilled if someone like Brett made a, a Muppet project. I would, I would love to. <laughs> and. Then, is is your favorite Muppet? I, well, like he's a Muppet, but is re- is it really Oscar the Grouch? No, it's, it changes. It changes. <laughs> I don't like to like stick with it. Oh, really? It's, yeah, because like you can't. Like, I've been you, Beaker for life. So, have you Beaker yeah, till you die? Yeah. I got a Beaker tattoo. Oh, good for Come you. Come on. You didn't know that? Where no. is it? I can't. I I can't show it. <laughs> Whoa! Take it off. Prove it. Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. Right on the Bunsen. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> For free? <laughs> I actually don't, I don't think you can see it. No, well, that, that's actually not Beaker, but it's okay. on. But this is okay? okay? This is yeah. this okay? Yeah, sure. Is it okay? To, I don't well, want to. Can you see it? Uh, I, I feel. Okay. I feel. Sorry. Uh, I feel creepy. <laughs> I'll show you later. Okay. <laughs> yeah, show me show me later. That'd be less creepy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I'm sweating. I'm sweating. You should be. You should be. I'm sweating. It was all going so well. We lost them at Peacocks. Let's go. <laughs> I, I'd actually love to know though what's who is everyone's favorite Muppet, if you had to pick. Well, Kermit is my first acting influence. So I think when you are a young child, Kermit is Tom Hanks or a Jimmy Stewart, right? Like that's that. I, when I would watch Kermit, I would say that's the style of acting I want to do. But <laughs> it's true. But Walter, the puppet from my Muppet movie, is named guess. after my first puppet that I ever owned that I bought at the pier in Boston. And uh, he's been my friend for a long time. Aww. He was born in my brain. And so I love Walter. <laughs> You're my favorite Muppet. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Miss Piggy because she's yes. just, she's literally just like, she's camp. She's an icon. She's like, I don't know. She's just the. Mm, she's got that je ne sais quoi yeah <laughs> like like I don't know what but uh, she's amazing I think she's she's always been very funny that's a strong strong funny woman pig same same Miss Piggy yeah really yeah I, I, I think I think my whole family growing up too like uh, every time she says something that was like kind of our <laughs> I feel like she because that's what I was thinking in my head I was like I feel like Miss Piggy has like a black demo Yo, almost baby, okay. like I feel I, there. I feel like there's like something where black women are like mm. <laughs> with her I mean I would, I'm inclined to yeah. agree yeah. she's also the only one who's changed her hair in 50 years yeah. oh then I'm picking her too oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah who was it yeah, who was it before who was it five seconds ago Honestly, I don't know the whole arsenal of all the Muppets. The last time I watched a Muppets movie was your Muppets movie when I was 12. And so... (laughs) (laughs) There's also just... (laughs) Sorry! (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, when I, my, my, the lease of my car is up. And I went the other day and I looked at this car and I, I uh, said to the man who showed it to me, I said, I don't know. I don't know if this is a young man's car. And he said, no, it's not. <laughs> Good. That's Good. real. That happened. Good. Did, did you get the car? No, I didn't get the car. <laughs> How hard did you have to work to get to zero that day? <laughs> Yeah. God. Well, I, Still climbing, huh? Yeah. I, I can't top that. So before we go, I, I just want to, if everyone can stay seated, they actually have to be somewhere, so we want to get them out of here quickly. Um, but I cannot wait to see what's in store for season two. Can you make it right now, please? Because, yeah. Um, but again, congratulations on a great show, and thank you so much, and thank you all for Thanks, being here. Thanks, Janelle. Thank, thank you so you. much. Great work. Thanks, thank everybody. That was so fun. Thanks, Thanks. y'all.